Kamala, this is a space station on Space Ground 4. Hi, Kamala, it's Marla here. How do you hear me? How are you loud and clear? Do you want to see the first pictures? Yeah, that would be great. just see the space station from photos. It's very difficult to get a sense of what it's like to be there. You get a random picture of an astronaut floating in a module. You have a very difficult time kind of understanding where that person is in the context of the larger station and just what it feels like to be in that enclosed volume. You know, we've mapped all over the world and we really wanted to kind of see where we could go. And so why not space? Space is the final frontier for Street View. I've wanted to be an astronaut for as long as I can remember. I wanted to go into space. My name is Chell Lindgren. I'm a NASA astronaut. And we are currently at Johnson Space Center in Building 9, the Space Vehicle Mock-Up Facility. And what we're doing here is we're going to try to bring Street View to the space station. My name is Matthew Potter. I am the technical photography operations lead for Google Street View. I guess it would be considered space view at this point. It is mapping, but what's fun about it is that it's mapping places that are unexpected. My name is Deanna Yick. I'm the global program manager for special collections in Street View. We're really excited to bring this to our users once we get this imagery live and to share it with the world. To some extent, I think everybody has a little bit of wonder when it comes to space. My name is Alice Liu. I am a technical program manager out of the Google Street View organization, and I'm the lead for the ISS Street View collection. We are trying to get all the crew procedures ironed out and figure out all the camera settings and mounting schemes and where we should map and understand the challenges. It's not just a succession of rooms, but we have modules going in all directions left, right, up, and down. It's also a very busy place with six crew members carrying out various research and maintenance activities 12 hours a day. Hi everyone, I'm European Space Agency astronaut Thomas Pesquet, and I was in charge of Google Street View on board the ISS. The ISS is a very technical place with lots of high-tech equipment on all surfaces, cables running around, and a complicated three-dimensional geometry. You might want to try it again because you were kind of all over the place. <laughs> That's the hard part is trying to do it freehand. No, I know. I, 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 I'm not. I'm sorry. I don't mean to criticize. I'm just saying. Yeah. This one is very challenging because in space we don't have gravity. So one of the issues that we're going to run into is not being able to actually lock things down. We're only using their equipment, so we can't send them a rotator tripod. That's not going to do any good in space unless you can really tie it down in bungee cords, but those are gonna be captured in the shots. So trying to figure out a way to capture these photographs is really challenging. When you actually walk into the module, the openings inside the modules are actually pretty small. So if you imagine people living there and working there, it might get a little claustrophobic. Yeah, I don't know if I'd be able to do it. All right, cool. Yeah. Then <laughs> Bungee cords? Let's get well, let's started <laughs> trying something. So We're going to be doing a lot of troubleshooting. We're going to try to figure out different techniques. Stretch it across like this. From the overhead to the floor, you do the same thing. And you mark where they cross. Remove one of them, and then you simply rotate around the center point to get your shots. So I think probably the best solution is to right now try this out and then see how well it works. It's definitely one of the more challenging setups I've had to yeah. use. 
and compounded by the fact that the photographer up there is going to be floating. And so, so we're trying to anticipate as much as we can, but... All of our street view procedures are predicated on the existence of gravity. <laughs> <laughs> So the crew members all day, every day are scheduled, eight hours a day, but any given experiment they're doing has probably been in work for at least two years, some of them five years, some of them longer. They might get five or six hours at most. Some of them get one hour of time where the, the crew members are actually doing something. My name is Marla Smithick. I am an operations engineer. We've done this amazingly quickly. We've really done it in four months, something like that, which is incredible. In fact, you probably shouldn't tell people that because you might start raising expectations. <laughs> While I was there, it was not lost on me. Hundreds of thousands of people had invested millions of hours to work on this facility. I mean, it is truly a miracle of modern engineering, you know, that we put this thing together over the course of a decade and that we've had people living there for over 16 years straight at this point. It's really an amazing thing. So while you're up there, you get a sense of just what it took to build this place, what it takes to keep it running, and what a remarkable place it is. And it just gives you a sense of what is possible when countries come together to work on a peaceful project like this. Photography awesome. expert cool. here. What do you think under weightlessness? Is it kind of difficult to set up all these things? And I, I never tried to do this, you know, rotating around. Oh, so you rotate around right around oh, that? Lens. Oh, yeah. that's cool. So we wouldn't, yeah. we wouldn't normally mount it to the camera sure, itself. Yeah. We would mount it right to this point right here. So if our plane is just a little bit off, dipped, that's, that's the other. That's the tricky then. part. Yeah. Right. But I think one thing we should try is to try to rotate around here and how, see how much parallax we get. The whole project all together, you know, f including not just one module, but the whole trying to do the whole space station. I mean, that's, that'll take quite a bit of work for sure. I think that having him show his wariness about the bungee option was a little nerve wracking for our team, given that he has so much experience actually being in space and knowing what might work and what might not. As you can see, it's kind of warped in some areas. It's a little oh, yeah. hard to see as you... Whoa! What's tip happening tip? down here? Yeah, so there's okay. uh, some parallax, as you can see mm -hmm. there. Well, that's pretty significant. So parallax is unfortunately not our friend in the imagery world. It is what happens when you take images from a slightly different angle and then try to stitch them together. It doesn't line up. Then you end up not being able to stitch it properly so that you will see visibly a seam where you shouldn't. I think it took us quite a bit of time to figure out what is the best way and easiest way to mount the camera without introducing too much stitching error. And I think we got that one kind of figured out by using bungee cords and we also tested out freehand. And it looks like both of them worked okay. And you're done. So just generally, the spirit is to show people different sort of utilities of things that enable them to live there. If we took the space station and plopped it down on the earth, it would cover kind of the area of a football field. And when you look at the space station from the outside, you know, there are kind of cross pieces and then the big solar arrays. And only a very small part of that is actually where we live and work. It's going well. Definitely feeling like I've uh, gotten the hang of it. And uh, we got to check out the bathroom, which is pretty interesting. So here is the toilet on board, which is the orbital outhouse. And um, over here inside is um, where number two happens. And then that one is for number one. The funnel up there, we're told that both provide a little bit of vacuum suction and they can be used simultaneously. <laughs> Very good to know. <laughs> we think that that's probably going to be one of the highlights, um, one of the probably most viewed panos, because who doesn't wonder how astronauts take care of business while they're in space? It's a little hard to imagine that 
for someone that goes and lives there for five and a half months, and this is all the space that you have. It's about the internal volume of a five bedroom house now. There's an incredible amount of room. I never felt claustrophobic there. In fact, if we were scheduled for different activities over the course of the day, you may not see another crew member for hours on hours over the course of the day as you're doing work. And in space, you use all the room, all the space around you. You can, I mean, you can float up, you can work on the ceiling, you can work on the deck. When we're having dinner, we're not just around the table, but we're also above the table, floating above the table. So, um, so we're, we use every bit of space we have, and as a result, it, it feels pretty roomy. We went for a midnight breakfast at the Waffle House, and apparently this is a tradition, according to Anne. I have never been to Waffle House, and so this is a first for me. Yeah, first time in Alabama, first time at Huntsville, and first time at Marshall Space Flight Center. It's 2.25 a.m. We're about an hour away from the operation, which is gonna start at 3.30, and will probably last until 5, 5.30. Crew members, their day is on GMT, so it is going to be about 9 o'clock in the morning for them, 8 o'clock in the morning, something like that. So we almost always support crew tended activities in the middle of the night. The average work day is about eight and a half hours. We get up, eat your breakfast, you drink your coffee, and then we have a morning conference at about 7 o'clock in the morning, and we talk with the ground about the plan for the day. Hey, Marla, this is a uh, space station on Space Ground 4. Hi, Tamon, it's Marla here. How do you hear me? It starts out being really stressful, and then you kind of get into a little bit of a flow. How are you loud and clear? Because you have to remember that you're on a radio that's, you know, going up to space. You just have to be really careful to speak clearly and give them precise directions and that kind of thing. Okay, Tamon, would you like me to go ahead with the crew brief? Uh, sure, why not? Go ahead. Overall, the idea is that we're going to take images of all the modules. These images are going to be used to create a comprehensive interior tour of the ISS. We'll be using bungees and Kapton tape to mark the middle of the module and as a reference point to rotate the camera around. So we have two and a half hours, so we're going to have to make sure that we're watching when they're taking the pictures in the right area and that we're on time to get it when the sun's in the right position and stay within the two and a half hours that we have. I have a couple worries about things that might go wrong. Um, mainly, what if, you know, the settings and the technique just doesn't work? Uh, then it's, we're back to square one. And in a lot of cases, they might just need to freehand instead of using the bungee to create this level of precision. Should I tell him to freehand it if he we can't find are, it? Yeah. Uh, it depends on how many he gets done in this one. Um, we have about 15 time. minutes. We've learned that the astronauts are all trained extensively in photography, and so we have a lot of faith that they'll do the right thing. Yeah, we didn't yeah. want them going into it. We want the center point to um, be. I'm a little worried that if you have the bungee going into the WHD, that you're going to be able to see that in the image. Affirmative, yeah, the where you were pointing there. Right here. Yes. We're confident that this will work out. It just might need a little bit of improvisation. Yeah, that's, that's no problem, I can do that. So if something goes wrong, we're gonna have to think really quickly um, to see if there's any modifications that we can think of to overcome whatever problem that comes along. But in general, I feel pretty good about it. I guess we'll find out. Okay. Do you wanna see the first pictures? Yeah, that would be great. I can't always see. Oh, there you go. Oh, that's good. What do you guys think? Hard to tell, right? It's pretty good. No, it looks good. I think the exposure okay. looks good. Yeah. Tomorrow, the Google team is saying the exposure looks really good, so thanks for sharing those with us. All right, Tomorrow, uh, got a good set of pictures for the first uh, position. And uh, if you guys agree, I'll move on to the next.
it's cold. It's cold and it's light out. Bright. A little tired, actually a lot tired, but um, pretty happy. I think it, it turned out as good as um, we can hope for. Yeah, it's a. Uh... It's very humbling to see, you know, where it all began. When people look into the sky, you kind of wonder what's out there and what it's like out there. If we can get the astronauts to do this, maybe on a regular basis as the modules change, because it's constantly changing, uh, they'll be able to use that information. Not only that, but the historical aspect of this is gonna be great because I'm sure as this one ends up coming obsolete, we're gonna to wanna to send up a new one at some point and people will still be able to view the space station as it was. I can't wait for my daughter to see it too. I think she'll be really excited. When I am done here, I'm gonna run over to the gift shop and buy our little NASA onesie. <laughs> We are really excited to maybe be a part of this history that, you know, digitalizes it and makes it available in a new and different way that many people can understand. I think for me, at least, every time I look up in the sky, I always wonder, what is it like up there? What is it like living up there? I mean, if you think about it, it's pretty crazy. The ISS module is traveling at over 17,000 miles an hour, and they're living there and working there. And I hope that the Street View collection will bring to people just a little bit of a sense of what it's like to live and work there. Just appreciate the wonders of science and engineering and what it takes for people to go all the way up to space and looking down back to us. I'm very enthusiastic about bringing Google Street View on board the ISS. It will be a fantastic opportunity for everyone to fly with us and to experience the incredible feeling of being in space. So see you soon on board the International Space Station. The Space Station is providing us with oxygen, food, water, and an atmosphere to keep us alive. When you look at the Earth, you recognize that it is one big spaceship and that if we don't take care of our spaceship, it's not gonna be able to take care of us.